Yeah, y'all know what that means. So welcome back to Children Lights Out. Yep. Uh, I thought the first time I did this that we had an understanding. I thought the first time when I did this that the message was clear, but it wasn't clear enough, apparently. Because for the second time in this very short life that has been shooting lights up in the first season, the Los Angeles Clippers become the first team to get two flagrant fouls in the same goddamn season. For those of you who don't remember doing my preseason show, I picked the Los Angeles Clippers to come out of the goddamn West as they will beat the Memphis Grizzlies in the Western Conference Finals. I will touch on Memphis Grizzlies at the end of the show. Right now, we're going to focus on the Los Angeles Clippers. That's why I'm not on screen right now, okay? Because I want y'all to focus on this team here. The Los Angeles Clippers are 34 and 33. They are currently eighth in the West. They are 22nd in points per game at 112.7. 15 in rebounding at 43. 25th in assists at 23. And 13 at opponent points per game at 113. So the opponents is 0.3 better at scoring then Los Angeles Clippers, which is kind of hard to say when you have Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Robert Covington, the list can go on. I know about this was a player that you have. Nevertheless, this is where we are. Kawhi Leonard, 23 points a game, six rebounds, four assists. Running mate Paul George, 20, about 24 points a game, six boys, five assists. Uh, this is around the trade deadline, which was February 9th. So we're talking the 8th, the 10th, the 14th, the 16th, the 24th, the 26th, the 28th, the second, the third, and the fifth. That is 10 games, ladies and gentlemen. This is 10 games. And what you see right here is the Los Angeles Clippers are three and seven in the last 10 games. Three and seven. Three and seven, you lost to Dallas, you lost to Milwaukee, you lost to the Kings twice, you lost to the Timberwolves, you lost to the Warriors, and you lost to the Nuggets. You beat the Warriors, you beat the Suns, and you beat the Grizzlies. I will touch on the Grizzlies, like I said later on. This is what you looked like in the last 10 games. This is what you look like since you acquired Russell Westbrook. Since he was bought out by the Utah Jazz. One and five. You was 0 and five until you played the Grizzlies last night. The Kings in that historic game of 176 to 175. You lose. You come back and you lose to the Denver Nuggets 134 to 124. And then you come back on national television again against the Minnesota Timberwolves and you lose to them 108 to 101. And then you had Golden State down without Steph Curry, without Andrew Wiggins, without Dream Mark Green, only Jordan Poole and Clay Thompson. And you lost that game. So Jordan Poole went off for 20 something points in the third quarter. And they came back and beat you 115 to 91. And then you lost to the Kings again 128 to 127. 0 5 before last night's game with the Grizzlies since you were. That is a huge problem. You have Russell Westbrook, you have Kawhi Leonard, you have Paul George, you have Norman Powell, who's an injured riser right now. You have Eric Gordon, you have Robert Covington, okay? You have Lakers Spatoon, you have Marcus Morris, you have Miles Plummer, who's been playing his ass off with Zubas being down. Yet y'all can't get it together. This is a problem. This is a goddamn problem. Paul George in the last six games, 27 points a game, shooting 45% from the field, 33% from three, seven boys, and about five assists. This is Paul George, PG-13. Kawhi Leonard, last five games, 31 points a game, shooting 
56 and a half on the field. Shooting 53 from three-point range. Why grab you six and a half rebounds a game? And then we get to this. They come gonna be on camera for this one. So let's do this. That is Dre Green of the Golden State Warriors. Guarding Russell Westbrook, who has the ball in his hand at the three-point line. Do you see what Draymond Green is standing? Draymond Green is standing right below the dotted U-shaped lines in the paint. Well, the Westbrook is out here at the three-point range. The disrespect is real when it comes to Russell Westbrook. I'm going to show you why the disrespect is real for Russell Westbrook. Because, you know why Draymond Green is doing this? I'm going to show you why Draymond Green is doing this. Because, since joining the Los Angeles Clippers was a Westbrook, you have been scoring 15 points per game, shooting 52% from the field, but 28 from three. Why is Draymond Green standing right there? You are shooting 28% from three. That is why. You can have that all you want to, Russell Westbrook, but you ain't coming in the paint. 27 is a better number to the defense than 52. And what's the rest of his case? He needs to know that 52 is better than 28. So let me get my ass inside the damn three-point line and find a way to get to the goddamn hole. Otherwise, they're going to continue to do this to you. Shoot. Shoot it. Shoot it. Go for it. Because... 28 is a very lovely number for defenses. That is a lovely. This three-point percentage is a very lovely number for defenses. But this 52 from the field is not a lovely number. We'll take it. And then you ain't rebounding like you used to. You only give me four rebounds a game since John Nicholas was four. Now he is giving me eight assists a game, but you also give me four tunnels a game too. So since John the Clippers. But when you with the Lakers, he was averaging 16 points a game, shooting 41% from the well, 42% from the field, shooting 30% from three, grabbing six rebounds, seven assists with three and a half turnovers a game, and 52 games with the Lakers with three starts of this season. Not the same number that you're putting up right now, Mr. Westbrook. But it's not on you. It's not on you. It's not all on you. And it will never be all on you, Mr. Westbrook, because you're not the leader of the team. That would be one Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. This, ladies and gentlemen, what you're seeing right here is the standings before the All Star break. So, when this coming out the All Star break, these were the standings. You see the Devil Nuggets, forty-one and eighteen. Memphis Grizzlies, 30, 35 and twenty-two. Third seed, the Sacramento Kings, at thirty-two and twenty-five. And who's the fourth seed? Oh, that's the Clippers, thirty-three and twenty-eight. 33 of 28. 33 of 28. Remember that. They were the fourth seed going into the going into the break after the All-Star. Uh, look where we stand right now. Denver is still number one. Memphis is still number two. Sacramento is still number three. But all of a sudden, Phoenix is four. Golden State is five. Wait a minute. Golden State was nice. They was at 500. They at fifth. Wait a minute, Minnesota. Minnesota was at eighth. They at sixth. The Dallas Mountains, they, they was at six. They at seven. They dropped the spot. But it's the damn Clippers who dropped from 48. Remember. 33-28 before the All-Star break. Now, they are 34 and 33. One and five since the All-Star break. One and five. We went from four to eight. Four to eight in six games. 
six. It took six games to get you out of the playoff into into the play-in. You had a playoff spot. Matter of fact, you not only had a playoff spot, you had the whole quarter in the first round. So being in the freaking play-in now. What is going on in Los Angeles? Steve Bowman about to lose his freaking mind right now. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. Y'all the leaders of the team. Do something about it. And I'm not even done. That's the crazy part. Because these are the nice games that they got. You got Toronto coming in Wednesday. Then you got to play the way the hot knees was on. I'm about to get into in the next segment. Then you got Golden State. That's on national television. Good gracious. My Magic get to come. My Magic get to play you. Then you go to Portland. You at OKC. OKC, no. OKC coming to you back to back games. You got the Pelicans coming to you. You got the Bulls coming to you before you go to Memphis. Literally, this is your next 10 games. Let's see. 8th, 11, 15, 18, 19, 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, 28th. This is your next 10 games. Eight of them is at home. Nine of them is on the West Coast. If y'all can't do nothing with this schedule, it's going to be hell. And for the Clips. And trust me, Laker Nation is Laker Nation is loving this right now. Okay, Laker Nation is loving this. Yon Heavy, uh, Jonathan Mathis, uh, Big Baby Jonathan. Uh, I'm just shouting out people of Laker of Laker fans that I know. They are going when they when they listen to this, they are going to let it because I'm killing the Clippers and not the Lakers. And my dumb ass hit the Clippers come out the West. Y'all make me look like a dumb ass right now. That's why I'm pissed off. But this is what I got to deal with. I'm not the only one. Ashley Baker, she picked y'all to. I think Phoenix, he picked y'all to. Shout out to Sports After Dark, by the way. That was a very good sports space, man, on Twitter. I love that space. Shout out to Sports After Dark. But this is what I got to deal with, along with Ashley and Phoenix. This is what we got to deal with, along with Clipper Nation. This is what we got to deal with. All this damn talent, y'all can't put it together. But we got the Los Angeles Lakers without LeBron beating the Golden State Warriors. Make it make sense. So the Clippers. Teron Lou. Y'all need to figure it out. I need to figure it out. Quick fast and in a hurry. Y'all went from home court as a four seed to the playing spot. In a matter of a handful of games. Figure it out and figure it out now. And get it right, because I still picked you to come out the damn West. 